Jay Wright's lethal senior backcourt and number seven Villanova. Game two of our doubleheader now. About his early part of the career, great offensive teams, good drive by Waynes, and a nice follow by Yaru. But he, he leads the country in two point and three point percentage one year at Northern Arizona. Think of this program needed to be, of course, Jamie Dixon has carried on that toughness tradition of Pittsburgh. Oh boy. Fisher in transition, a chance for a three point play and a quick start for the Cats. Doris, you know, we watched Corey Fisher last year average about almost eight free throws a game. He's got that uncanny ability to just knife his way to the basket. And believe me, this was a point of emphasis. Malcolm Lee in and out. There's an offensive rebound, though. Underneath getting shut down is Nelson. Stokes hits a triple. 8 nothing Villanova. Timeout Ben Howard. I, I think Adrian Brampton studio said they might run into a buzzsaw. Well, a buzzsaw is starting to hum right now for Ben and Ben Howland's system. You better be able to guard. Yeah. You that, will sit on the bench if you don't guard for Ben. I like this kid. You know what? They've had tr struggles at the point. And Jones gives them a guy that's tough, hard nosed, but he's got a heck of a matchup tonight with these two point guards. Smith missed inside. Kenya rips away the rebound, the outlet, and here comes Waynes. Creates space and lays it home. Now his mentor was Kyle Lowry, who did some good things at Villanova for Jay Wright, and he's got similar attributes. These go flying as Yaru ended up under the basket on the dunk by Brendan Lane. Kick and roll for Yaru, nice. as easy as could be. Well done. No rotation from the weak side. On a 14, allowed yeah. under 60 per game. Right. Fisher goes to the deck. Five to shoot. Back outside. Rolling home a three. Dominic Cheek. And for UCLA to allow nearly 70 points, dedicated as any player was to their conditioning program, and in all seriousness, dropped about 50 pounds. So as Ben Howland put it, he is a svelte 305. Rolling inside, that is too easy. That is not UCLA defense if it becomes that wide open for Stokes. Hey, short. Waynes to the corner, wide open look, knocking it down. It's Corey Stokes, Ben Howland calls timeout. The problem with that play is you didn't meet the ball handler up the floor. You have got to, if you allow either Stokes or Waynes, or excuse me, Fisher or Waynes, that kind of vision in the open floor, yep. you're going to be in trouble, friend. Well, and that's what happens, Doris. You're exactly right. You give Malik Waynes a running start, wants to drive into the paint, and then to draw the defense. And you know what? Corey Stokes has done that a couple hundred times in his Villanova career. Get a piece of the paint. That's the object of the Villanova guards. Piece of the paint leads to open jump shots. Well, how about make them change direction? Comes up with the loose ball after that tough Philly press by Villanova creates the turnover. Four minutes to go in the opening half. Villanova has led by as many as nine. The lead down to five. Fisher able to stretch the lead back up to seven. You got to pick your poison because Dominique Cheek is spotting up on that three-point line. So if you help off, help off. Keep Fisher out of the paint. You're opening up that three at 6-6 six, six, and the two big guys inside. Yaru in front of Nelson. Hard to believe this guy is in his infant stages as a basketball player. Is it four, Is this his fourth year now? This is his fourth year yeah. competitive basketball. Competitive basketball. He's only been playing basketball for six years. He was a soccer player growing up in West Africa. Well, one thing that helped him, he went to Montrose Christian where he played for Stu Vetter and improved rapidly in that one year. Corey Fisher with an elbow jumper. And Gavin Edwards, but as soon as this season began, he knew he had to grab it, and after that Stony Brook game, he knew he had to take control and take as many shots as needed to make sure UConn would win. He's doing that now, and he's making them. Single digits. It's been a very balanced first half for Villanova. Waynes, yep. strong drive. That's a situation where if you're even, you're leaving. Turns you over, that's one thing. But when you're making silly mistakes, that's another. 
There he is again. So Same thing. Another strong yep. five with the left hand. See, he's got Jones on his hip and hip, and he's in jail. There's no way Jones can get back in front of that strength and quickness. Lane fumbled the pass for Malcolm Lee. Another turnover. Fisher attacks the other way. And Villanova putting on a show here in the first half of the Garden. I think Zeke Jones right now seeing double. He's Danny Hurley moves on to Wagner, and now Rashawn McLeod, former Duke uh, Blue Devil NBA player, now taking over at St. Benedict's. Stokes steps back, knocks down a jumper, and you saw when Danny Hurley took that Wagner job, who he took along with him, big brother, Bobby Hurley. Yeah. His code of conduct is dealing with this right now, trying to decide what kind of punishment they'll deal. Now, Pinkston's allowed to practice with the team, just not allowed to represent Villanova in any way. That's why he's sitting in the stands over my shoulder, not on the bench. They're hoping to have a hearing in front of that code of conduct council on camp. Personal 3-4 kind of guy who can do a lot of different things. Well, he gives you the, he gives you the, as you said, you know, it still allows you to stretch the defense, and yet he can reach inside. Nice catch. Maurice Sutton with a chance for a three-point play. I like this guy. Maurice Sutton is a redshirt sophomore now, third year in the program. Started seven games a year ago. They're trying to put weight on him. But watch his hands on the roll to the rim. In traffic. Nice finish. Again, more big bodies up front than Villanova has had in the last number of years. Our pieces. James drives it. Scores again, plus the foul. He's like the, the, the running back who gets the, you know, the turned corner. Yeah. And once he gets that defender sitting on his hip, forget about it. Well, it's strength, Lewis. Absolutely. you got to have quickness. But watch his strength to the rim. Right into the body of the 6'9 lane. And he basically puts Lane in jail because he initiates the contact. Right. The best guards, they're not avoiding contact. They're hoping for the end That's one. That's exactly right. Jones takes it himself. Yaru got it on the way up. One, he's he's going to release contact on that bottom left side and just go over and help. But it was a better possession than that because it, the guy's trying to post him up on the opposite side of the floor. He had to spin off him to make sure he didn't get sealed and still aware enough to get to the weak side of the floor. This kid, despite his... his very limited time playing competitive basketball has unbelievable feel. They still have a seven point lead. And I wonder if because of the way Smith and Reeves have played tonight, if Jay Wright does not want to go with the four guards. Yeah. Corey Fisher with a pretty jumper. And he likes going left. He really does. He likes going left either for the drive to the rim or for that pull up jump shot. In college basketball. When, when folks talk about what are the great home courts in college basketball, no one ever brings up Texas AM. Exactly that right. is a great place Rita Rita. to watch a game. Yep. Great student support there. You saw that this weekend with our football team. Waynes from the corner hits a three, and all of a sudden Villanova gets hot in two trips, and the lead is pushed back up. Tonight. He's got great basketball skills. But Off UCLA. You, know, you talk about the maturation of Malik Waynes. He can score it. He can run your team. He can shoot it from distance. He can be a lockdown defender because he's got unbelievable feet. And I just, I like how and he competes. And next year, he becomes the leader of this team as Corey Fisher moves on, just like Scotty Reynolds did. And he might want him to move over to the right arm. <laughs> just a thought. Ben Howland told us today he likes the Denver Nuggets and he likes the Birdman. <laughs> In and out for Waynes. Offensive rebound by Mook Yaru. Another one. And Yaru scores inside. Well, he missed two thirds of last season with that hepatitis B. They brought him back, and you can see Doris, he's really still a second semester freshman. Honeycutt's done a nice job. They just tried to run that little rub screen to get Stokes open. He stayed attached. Fisher gets his man in the air, knocks down the jumper, plus the foul. The senior Corey Fisher with a chance for a three-point play. And that's what you call savvy right there. Little head fake. Take your time. This is well done. There's a guy named Walt Frazier. Clyde, he used to do this right in the same spot. And you know what? He wore number 10, too. Villanova, of course, the Hall of Fame. Bill, Bill Bill Piano, a guy I watched play with Milton Rader. That is a, you know, across the board, impact your campus. Huge 
move for Villanova to make. We'll see if they do it. They're just trying to keep the floor space nice. Garou underneath, and he's got a career high in rebounds as he adds to his double-double. Well, you know that the traps are coming at this point. Well, Corey Fisher just sensational off the crossover. He's got an unbelievable hesitation move. He can get near the rim and make adjustments. Well, Corey Stokes, we've seen the versatility of his game. No longer just a sniper. And we can do that quite well, but he's guarding people and putting it on the floor. And Malik Wayne's the guy I like because of his fearless, tough-minded competition. Likes to get near the rim, can adjust, gets close, uses either hand, runs your team. I mean, so many of the great players from the New York area end up at either Villanova or Pitt. And, and that may be changing. Steve Lavin. Yep, that may be changing because uh, when St. John's had some coaching changes, yep. other schools 